This video covers project 2-2. So we're going to start up our CentOS, open up Oracle VirtualBox, click start. Once your system is loaded, notice we've got a graphical screen where we can have a mouse and point and click. However, for this lab, we want to jump to the command line. The main purpose of this class is to get used to the command line interface and not necessarily learning exactly Linux, but uh, if you get used to one command line interface, you can jump to other command line interfaces like Microsoft DOS, uh, Cisco's iOS for their switches and routers, and Unix systems. So here we'll click inside the window in the gray area, make sure that our mouse is inside the area so that it'll accept keyboard input. We'll use our left control alt and F2 keys. So on the left side of your keyboard, left of the uh, space bar, hold down the control alt and hit F2. That jumps us to a command line. So we'll log in as root and pass 1234. As you notice, you can't see the password being typed on the screen. So you just have to type and hit enter and hope you spelled it right. This time we're going to look at a couple of commands. Uh, one command is date. So if you type in date, it tells us the current date and time. Now they want us to type in date with an uppercase D. And notice we get an error. So look at your screen real close and what errors are. If you get a bash, uh, command not found, then you've typed something wrong. So this is showing us that Linux is case sensitive. This is different from Microsoft's command line. Anything that you type in a Microsoft command line, it converts everything you type into uppercase. So there's no case sensitivity, whether you're uppercase or lowercase, everything's gone through a converter before it is executed. In Linux, it is not. Everything is case sensitive, including file names. Now it wants us to switch to a different terminal. So again, using the left control alt, left of your spacebar, hold those down and tap the F5 key, we get a new login prompt. So Linux is multi-user. You can log in as a different user on different terminals. Here they have us log in as user1. So I'll type user1 and hit enter. Now I'll type in secret as the password. Now during the install time, if you accidentally type user1 with a capital U, you'll have to use that here. But hopefully you followed the installation video carefully and typed user1. Now it wants us to type who at the command line. This command tells us how many people are on our Linux system and what terminals they have logged in. So as we can see, we have root logged into terminal 2. And we have user 1 logged into terminal 5. So if you notice on the project, it says take a screenshot. So you'll want to open up your snipping tool and take a screenshot. You may also, I believe, use your mouse and take a screenshot right here. If you go under the machine menu and click take screenshot, you may use that instead of your snipping tool if you would like. And then you'd save as project 2-2. and it has PNG. I'm going to save this just to my desktop for the time being. <clears throat> so there's my project 2-2. I'll open it up and bring it down and see that this is the screenshot that you'll, one of the screenshots you'll attach and send with your second week assignment. Now we'll go on down to step 5. It says we want to switch back to um, terminal 2. So I'll click inside the window and use my left control alt and F2. Remember you have to click inside the window before it'll start reading keyboard input. If your mouse happens to be outside the window um, sometimes will not let you type, especially if you've got something clicked outside the window. 
notice it won't type on the keyboard. So I have to keep my mouse inside and clicked in the window. Now step six says try all the different commands. I'm going to run through them really quick. Clear, blanks the screen, reset, does about the same thing. It uh, reloads the bash shell, resets all variables. You can read up on that in the second chapter on what these commands do. Again, type in who, w, who am I, id, date, calendar, you name, and then before you type exit, you want to pay attention to all of these commands and look at what are they doing and read about them. So I'm going to type exit and switch over to terminal 5, so control alt and I'm going to hit F5 on the keyboard. Here it wants us to exit and log out. So I'll type exit. I've now exited out of both terminals. Now, this video is not very long yet, so I'm going to move on to project 2-3. In this project, they want us to go into the graphical interface. And they say use your Control-Alt key. Again, use the left ones. The right control key is used for VirtualBox itself, so it's um, captured in the special key. So Control-Alt F1, and it'll bring up our graphical interface. Now, some graphical interfaces in Linux also use Control-Alt F7. So if Control alt f1 does not work, you might try Control alt f7 That's the difference between GNOME interface and KDE interface window managers, which we're about to talk about. So on this screen, uh, this is kind of like a Windows 8 screen where you have to click with your mouse and drag it up to the top, if anybody has Windows 8 yet. And here we see sample user 1, they want us to click on it, that's the user listed, and type in secret as the password. I hit enter. We'll log into the graphical interface. And the desktop that is started is GNOME because that is the default that Red Hat and several distributions like. I kind of prefer the KDE interface. So, unlike Windows and Linux, you can have different um, graphical interfaces. And different companies or different groups of people have created a interface for screensavers and backdrops and icons and menus and stuff and how to control the computer graphically. So here we get a welcome screen. We need to make sure English is checked. If not, go ahead and click. Make sure it's United States English instead of United Kingdom. So we'll hit next. <clears throat> Keyboard source. I'll go ahead and click on US English again and hit next. Here, we don't want to create an account for cloud data. This is kind of similar to the Microsoft Windows Live where you create an account and you get a, a SkyDrive and stuff. We don't want to create one. So we'll just click Next. And then, it's basically thank you for uh, setting up and installing CentOS. Just click the Start Using CentOS button. The GNOME Help screen will open up. So at this time, you want to pause the video and you'll want to watch these three videos on getting started with GNOME. After you watch the videos, you also notice my pronunciation of what looks like GNOME. The GNOME print or a GNOME project, this the uh, sounding of it for pronunciation, as described in their help document, is the GNN, the same thing as the uh, GNU project which is a project for writing all of the free open source utilities for Linux, like the utility for clearing the screen, all those commands that we used in the previous lab, the who, the w. So that was a project to write all of the utilities for managing a, a Unix system. And that was under the GNU project. And their phonetic pronunciation of GNU is GNU. So they said the proper pronunciation of GNOME is to say the GNU or GNOME uh, pronunciation. So that's where the G comes from. <clears throat> so now we'll close down the help file 
and they want us to open up a terminal window. So in the applications menu, terminal is one of the frequently used tools on a new server. So they already have it right out here as um, a favorite. You can also find it under, I believe, utilities. There's terminal. Or under favorites. So either place will open up a terminal. And you notice the command line looks very similar when we hit Control Alt F2 or Control Alt F5 before. This is the same type of terminal just brought up so we can view it in a graphical screen. And sometimes this is easier to see text because it has a white background instead of a black background. So you may in the future find it uh, easier to log in and use a terminal instead of doing the control alt F2 or control alt F5. So here they have us type the word who and notice instead of saying TTY Two or TTY five, it says PS. It's a it means pseudo terminal. It means it's kind of you know it's not a real attached terminal. It's um, running in a graphical software, so you're not attached to a, a terminal screen. Um, so it's graphical based. So that's what that means. And then really important, if you are going to use the graphical terminal instead of doing the Control Alt F two and logging in as root in subsequent labs and chapters. When it has you log in as root, notice here we're logged in as user1. Here it shows user1. I need to switch to the root account. That would be switch user or also known as super user, the su command, and a minus. The minus is very important. It makes sure that everything is loaded, all the programs and apps and uh, configuration is loaded if you log in as the root account by itself at a login screen. So we'll hit enter and it's asking for the root password that's pass1234 with a capital P and now you notice the prompt has changed stating that we're loaded up as root. Okay now it wants us to log out of the GNOME interface so I'm just going to exit out of the terminal window close terminal and it says go up here to sample user 1 and click log out back at the login screen it wants us to click the sample user 1 and then it wants us to click the cog wheel right beside sign in so it looks like a little gear and it wants us to change to KDE Plasma Workspace. And now we'll type in secret and click sign in. After a few moments, KDE will load. It wants us to click on the start menu, the little icon down here where normal Windows starts. It brings up a start menu style and it wants us to find terminal. So I'm going to go to applications. I'm going to click on or scroll and find utilities. And under utilities, I will scroll down and click on terminal. little music for the start screen or the KDE startup. I'll expand the terminal out and I'm going to type in it says type in echo okay it took me a couple seconds there to get the uh, where it would type it's still loading up so type in echo space dollar sign shell notice the uppercase shell it shows us that slash bin slash bash is our shell. The shell is not the KDE, it's not the graphics. It says the shell is what brings up the text mode 
that allows us to type these commands like shell or who or the other command line stuff. I jumped past a section uh, above where we logged in as root. Notice if we're logged in as a regular user, there's a dollar sign right here, meaning we have limited access to the machine. We can't install new programs. There's a lot of stuff we cannot do. And if we do the su minus like we did in a couple steps above, hit enter and supply the root password of pass1234, notice the prompt changed to a pound sign. So that's a cue stating that we are a super user. This is the same symbol if you're going to be taking any of your Cisco classes, Networking Essentials, Router Tech, that when you get into a switch, if you've got privileges to make changes to the device, it'll be a pound sign. If you don't have privileges to make uh, changes to the device, it'll be another character. Not necessarily a dollar sign, but something other than pound. So pound is universal, meaning that you have full administrative or root access into a device. Okay, now we want to go back down here where the start menu or launcher is. Instead of left clicking on it, this time we want to right click and click on switch to classic menu style. I prefer the classic menu style. So once that is turned on and I click the start menu, it looks similar to something that you would find in Windows XP or Windows 7 where all of your items are organized and easier to, for me, I find this easier to, to look and find. Especially if I'm new to an OS and I don't know the names of all the programs. Here we'll switch back to to the application launcher style. So if I right click again, it allows us to switch back to the new style. And in this this style is kind of more like Windows 8 where that they want you to bring up something called the charms bar and, and type in what you want to bring up. So if I type in terminal, it brings up different terminals that I could launch. Not sure why it minimizes it like that, but we bring that up. So whichever style that you like, uh, if you like the Windows 8 type style or Windows 7 type style where you type in the applications and it brings them up in the list, or if you like the classic style, my preference, where you can visually see programs like a uh, word processor program, you can easily find it and not have to know that it's called LibreOffice instead of something else. So there's a full Office suite. You can open in Microsoft Word documents and save stuff in PDF. So kind of a um, Microsoft Word competition. Word's got a whole lot more features, but uh, this does basically anything word processing that anybody would want. So it's available in Linux and free, not the uh, expensive cost of Office. Okay, well that's about all for this. Um, it says go ahead and log out and exit the KDE desktop. So that'll be down here at the launcher again. You click start or the launcher. We'll go to leave and we're going to go to log out. And I'll create another video for the next two sections.